Hey there. Today I would like to talk about a pen that I have already covered in my Fountain Pen Collection overview videos, um, namely the Waterman Hemisphere. The hemisphere. I really like this pen actually. It's not that expensive, relatively speaking, but I do think it's a very nice pen. In fact, I got this in a type of gift set along with a ballpoint pen, which I'll also try to cover in this video. Now, in all honesty, ballpoints are not my preferred pens, pen types, writing instruments, uh, so I will, I will put the emphasis on the fountain pen, with all due respect, by the way. So, let's start with the cap. There's a few things I like about the cap. The very tip of the cap is interesting. You see this is cut at a fairly steep angle, giving an interesting shape to it. I've never seen this on another pen, uh, which which is kind of nice. It's neither flat nor rounded, as in most pens. It's just pretty sharp angle. So that's kind of nice. Overall, I like this deeply reflective black lacquer. I think it looks really cool. Uh, you can see this this line of, of light. That's really purely a reflection. It's it's a really really uh, reflective coating of lacquer, which is really nice. I also like this black and chrome combination, which I think looks pretty cool. Uh, here we have the clip. Uh, the clip has the trademark split in the middle that all Waterman pens have. It's a good way to recognize this brand. Now we have this ring, which says Waterman on one side and Paris on the other side. You probably can't see it, but it's a small matter. Uh, the clip, by the way, uh, it's a, a pretty good clip. I think it has some nice springy um, capacity to it. At the end here, we have this um, another chrome-like cap, which you can see if I hold it in light like that, which is fairly nice, I think. Overall, the pen has a classical cigar shape, which means that, like Brontosaurus, to quote an elk, if you know that Monty Python sketch, uh, it's thin on one end, much, much thicker in the middle, and thin on the other end again. Uh, clearly, this is not a brontosaurus. This is a pen, but it, it does fo follow this this general shape. So it it is it really is thinner at both ends, and it is thicker in the middle, which I, I kind of like as a design. I think it's, it, it's it's pleasant to hold. This stuff, by the way, is extremely smooth to to the touch. It's it's really the, the nice and reflective, but it's also there's really no resistance, no texture to it. It's really smooth. That's, that's something I kind of like. Um, okay. The nib is of an unidentified material. Uh, I don't know what this is. Considering the price, I would say stainless steel, maybe rhodium. I'm not, not absolutely sure. Um, it is a nice nib, even though this is fine. I didn't actually pay attention to it when I when I bought this. Uh, I just actually someone gave this to me as a gift, so I just said I would like to have that, and then um, that was very cool. But I didn't really have, get a chance to to pick the nib size. And even though this is fine, and I'm not a huge fan of fine nibs, I think this one works pretty well. It's not scratchy; it writes pretty fluently and smoothly. Um, on the, um, uh, the the nib, it's, it's not a huge nib. As I said, it's not an extremely expensive pen. Uh, it's just the, the Waterman logo, and again, it says Waterman and Paris. It takes converters. I see I don't have any in there right now, but a standard Waterman converter. It'll also take Waterman cartridges, which are proprietary, you no know, international cartridges. Maybe you could maybe it could take it because this does look like a pretty standard international like uh, opening but I'm I've never tried it I'm not sure so that's kind of nice uh, the, the cap is a click on cap so it clicks in place and then it's it fits snugly uh, it's not a screw on cap which I kind of prefer but in all I have to say I really do like the, the design of the pen 
it's pleasant to hold. Uh, I have fairly large hands, uh, so this, you know, it's even for me, this is comfortable to hold. And if you post it, it just gets just a little bigger, and that's, I think, even better. The grip section is smooth, there is no texture to this, and it's slightly tapered. I've never had any problems of you know, sliding. Some people think smooth grip sections aren't that great, or they, they don't like steel grip sections. Well, this is plastic, it's not steel, and I think it's, I think it's more than adequate. I've never had any problems with it. So let's have a short look at the ballpoint pen for those of you who are interested in that. You can see it's a very similar design. When it comes to the, the cap, the fountain pen and the... it's not really a cap because the tip of the pen is just there, uh, but in any case you can probably see that it has the same angled... Uh, the angled cutoff point, whatever you like to call that. So that's kind of nice. It has the same type of clip with the opening. Uh, it's got the same little metal ring. It's got some silver, well, probably chrome, I, I think, here. It's got the same highly reflective black lacquer, which is really nice. The mechanism here is not pushing, but twisting. So you twist the cap, and then the, the tip clicks out, and it clicks in place. Um, you can just unscrew this part. and then take out this cartridge, another standard uh, Waterman cartridge and that is actually pretty much it. Now I'm actually thinking I shouldn't open it like that. I think there's another way. Oh wait, didn't you just... No, 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 now I'm really taking it apart. Uh, that's very interesting too, by the way. So there are many, many ways you can open up this pen and, and take out stuff. Um, and look, it's all together again. Uh, uh, this was supplied with a black cartridge, which I kind of like, because pretty much all ballpoint pens, I think, are, are supplied with blue uh, cartridges. So it's nice to, to have a black line. Um, I'm actually, I didn't think about showing you how this writes, but it's just a ballpoint pen. It's not particularly broad nib, it's just a, a very standard ballpoint pen. What I will show you in a minute is how this pen writes. Um, so in all, I like this pen. And uh, I'll show you how it writes next, and that's pretty much it. So, see you later. So, writing with the um, Waterman Hemisphere, I have inked it up with um, Gerbin 1670 ink. I think most of you will be familiar with that. It's a very deep red. Uh, let's see how it writes. A fine nib. Not my favorite, but not the worst Waterman nib out there. Let's see some writing. Seen by time's fell hand defaced the rich browed cost of outworn buried age. When sometime lofty towers I see, down raised in brass, eternal slave to mortal rage. Yes, beautiful. Um, etc. Sonnet 64, I think. In any case, as you can see, the writing is very smooth. Even though it's a fine nib, I think it's not at all scratchy. It may sound scratchy, that's just the microphone of my camera, which tends to pick up the scratchy noise quite clearly. When it comes to flex, let me see. Whoa, that was the um, feed scraping over the paper. Let me clean that a little. Right, um, so 
this is with quite some pressure and this is no pressure at all uh, there is some line variation possible but not that much you see it's pretty wet though especially for a fine nib um, Now it's also, of course, a property of the ink, not just the nib, but, I mean, for a fine nib, it tends to be pretty wet, I think. So that's, that's interesting. Um, if you write quickly with it, sacrificing legibility, of course, the quick brown fox, etc., you see the feed holds up perfectly well with the writing speed. So that's very good. Um, this is writing with absolutely no pressure. I'm just holding it still, no skipping, no skidding. So that's really, really nice. So I have to say I'm fairly pleased with the performance of this pen. And of course, I was very pleased with you watching. See you soon.